Welcome, Faith Center Exchange. How is everybody tonight? Hello. Good? Hello, yeah? Lively group. Wow. I think we're going to need to go to two services pretty soon. Look at this no, place. No, we're not. This we're is gonna... awesome. What's... That's great. We're, we're good. We'll just cram them in here. We're used oh, to being... Right. We just yeah. line the walls with you guys. That'll be great. Stack them in like cordwood, huh? That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Help me welcome our online audience. We have Judy Z in Richfield, Chris Attaway at Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're so yeah. jealous. And there, there might... He's working on his tan right He's now. He's working I on his tan. Yeah. yeah. And there no. might be some people up in Alaska that I left those roofers, oh, the wild right. group. Yes. They might be. If you guys are up there, I don't know if they can get reception or not. Yeah. It was the end of the earth. <laughs> town of 300 people. Yeah. Was, everybody actually waved when you were driving by. Didn't you say everybody was waving to you? Yeah, I did. It was awesome. like you're on a motorcycle or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and help us say hi to Stephanie, too. Our very own Stephanie just had surgery, and she's at Faith Manor resting. So oh. say hi to them. Yeah. Hi. I think Ken Otten's out there somewhere, too. I'm Who? sure Ken Otten. He's oh, always traveling. Ken? Oh, world, where so. is he? So, Yeah. Florida. What else you got? Okay, hi Ken. Okay, so JV kids, junior hires, you can be dismissed tonight. And there's Lauren. Look at her. She says, "I'm already there." <laughs> uh, right on. Okay, so help us celebrate clean and sober birthdays tonight. Anybody clean and sober in here? Yeah. How many? Yeah. yeah. How, how about somebody? Anybody that's celebrating under a week, please stand so we stand can up. honor you. Anybody? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. You can do it. Awesome. You can do it. You got this. That's right. 30 days. How about anybody with 30 days tonight? Good job. Right here, yeah. Right there, 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 there. Woo! Right here. Good job. Okay. 60 days. How about 60? Right here. Good job. Right there. Anybody else? Great. How about 90 days tonight? 90. 90. Right here. Taylor. Yes, that's that's a praise God. Okay, how about what? Right here. Right here. Okay. Good job. You gonna stand? <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Nothing like calling people out, Donnie. <laughs> how about six months? Anybody six months tonight? Good job. Right here. Oh, here, here. Yay, Michael. Right there. Good job. Okay, nine months. Nine months, Carol. All right, Carol. Right here. Right here. Good job. Awesome. Okay, anybody celebrating one year tonight? Anybody? Right there, Kyle. Woo! Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. You rock. Awesome. That's so great. Anybody celebrating over a year tonight? Stand up. Holler out. How many? Shout two, two years. years. Help. Right here? Almost three years? Awesome. awesome. Good. David? 21 months. 21 months. 21 months. There it is. Right here, Amber? How many? 18 months. Yay. Right. Woo. Ethan? 17 months. 17 months. Yes. Yeah. Right here? How many? 23, 23, awesome! Woo! Right here? How many? Nine years! Woo! Awesome! Yay! That's so great. We're so proud of you guys. That's yes. so awesome. Yes. Okay, so tonight we're going to switch it up a little bit. This is our third Saturday of the month, and normally we have breaking bread. But we're not having breaking bread tonight, and we're also not going to be doing our Grow Discipleship class tonight. We're, we've been doing the last two weeks Grow Discipleship, and you guys were supposed to attend this week, but we're going to just push it back another week because we have such a full weekend this weekend. Did you guys catch it on the link? Tomorrow is our Harvest Day celebration. Are you guys coming out? It'll be great. Yeah? Have fun. So... Uh, it's a free event, but you guys can buy tickets for different things, like um, there's going to be a chili cook-off. I think we have some contenders in here. Raise your hands if you're going to be doing chili. Janet, come no, on. Wendy, know. Wendy's up. Anybody else? So we'll have chili. We'll have a pie-eating pie contest. We're going to be building scarecrows, scarecrow building. 
face painting. Um, I think there's a We're gonna beat up a too. Saturn. We're going to beat up a Saturn. Oh, yeah, car, car bash. bashing. Yeah, <laughs> car bashing. If anybody doesn't like Saturn, we're going to be bashing a Saturn. <laughs> sorry if you have and a If you Saturn, like Saturn, sorry. we're sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's tomorrow from 2 to 6. And anything that's raised benefits recovery. Yay! Yes. Good job. That's awesome. So bring all your friends and bring your appetite. I think we've got, we're going to be cooking up some hot dogs, too, so it'll be fun. And then what else is going on? Oh, we've had this question a lot. Baptisms uh, are going to be November 1st. So if you'd so like it, to be just baptized. Just by a show of hands, how many in here would like to be baptized? Just uh, Awesome. Yay. Okay. Woo. We'll get in the water for you. We'll do it. That's good. And it'll be, be it'll be warm water. It'll be warm water. Yeah. Heated water. Let's say that. Better than warm water because that could be something else. So. What do you got? Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, Kelso Longview. We've got after uh, Larry did his awesome word last week. And what was it? New level of commitment. We had so many people step up for Kelso Proud Longview. Yeah. I'm going up there. So great. So, uh, Wendy, Wendy and Taryn are actually organizing a, a Facebook group page. If you guys want to get on board with helping on Friday nights, we're going to do recovery service. And as soon as we get enough volunteers, you know, trained and being able to step up and do these, uh, the positions like in children's church, greeting, ushering, etc., we're going to be starting that service. So the sooner the better. If you guys can step up and do it, it's going to be good. And last, we're going to be doing a United Night with Kelso on November 9th. So that's a Sunday evening at 6 p.m. And we want all you guys to come up there and show Kelso Longview that what recovery is all about. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. So stand up and shake somebody's hand. Cool. We'll get into the Word. All right. Thanks, honey. I got Okay, come on back. We're going to have a... Hunker down and we'll be out of here in about 25 minutes. Maybe. How's everybody doing? Um, I missed you. <laughs> missed you too. I wonder if you guys know um, why we're here. I mean, if you really know why we're here. Um, there's been a chain of events that have taken place over many years. Um, Vic and I have been doing this for almost 10 years, working with people in recovery and and God has just done amazing things in opening doors and, and bringing things together. And it's, it's pretty ironic that um, in the 1980s, I know some of you weren't around, um, uh, I helped uh, pour the uh, concrete sidewalks around this building. And um, it's just uh, ironic that, that God has brought all the intersections together 
in, in what's taking place here right now. And um, we had been doing recovery ministry, and, and um, Glenn and Theresa have been pastoring this church for 31 years, and, and um, they uh, just have a heart for, for God. They have a heart to reach the community. And, and um, I'm going to have Bruce, would you come on up here for just a moment, and, and I'm going to just talk with Bruce a little bit. And uh, what happened is um, there was a situation that arose in their church, and out of that situation, uh, God brought us together, and Glenn and Theresa and us, and, and we came to a point um, of uh, interaction to where somebody had told them that they should meet us, and somebody had told us that we should meet them, and we met, and um, this whole... Uh, thing was birthed out of out of a tragedy, um, and the tragedy was um, this is Bruce Washburn and and Bruce. Um, tell us about your son. Do we have a picture of Gabe? Um, tell us about your son. That's my son Gabriel, and I'm uh, have the honor to uh, pastor's new resident house on this property here when it, when it's all dedicated it's going to carry the name of, of the Gabriel house in honor of my son Gabe was an amazing young man uh, he, he got uh, I think he was about four years old mom took him into his, into the bed to tuck him in at, at night probably a Sunday night and he said mommy says I want Jesus in my heart four years old she said, Gabe, do you, know what, do you understand? What? She said, Mom, I, yeah, I understand. I want, I want Jesus in my heart. I, w- I want to be born again. I, w- I want to go to heaven. I want Jesus, Mom, I want, I want you to help me get Jesus in my heart tonight. And then um, he, he, was, he was one of those little kids that he would, he'd be running around and said, I love my life. <laughs> and another part of, part of him um, I worked construction. Uh, I loved to work on high rises. I was a carpenter. Um, and Gabe, even though he, he loved the Lord the way he did, he still had a, had a bit of a spirit of fear in him. And if I happened to be five minutes late getting home from the, from the job, he'd be in a real panic. So then again, about, about five years old, his mom, he went to his mom and said, what, where's dad? He's late. What's go- Is dad okay? And his mom said to him, he says, well, Gabe, if you're so concerned that your dad is in trouble, you need to start praying for him. Pray protection over him. From that point there, probably five years old, maybe four, I retired from the trade in um, 04. So he was born in 87, 91. From 91 to 04, I would leave the house. I was a construction worker. I'd be out the door at 5 o'clock. That little guy right there would be up, grab my lunch box and my, and my thermos bottle, walk me out to my truck, put me in my truck, and lay hands on me and pray protection over me. And then he would stand in the road until I could no longer see him in my rearview mirror. Did that every day I went to work. <laughs> That's the kind of love for his Lord and Savior that this young man had. And then somewhere in high school, probably senior year in high school, oh, we, we, oh. just the short version. Short version. There is no short. There is no short. He, want, he wants a short version. Um, if, if you knew Gabriel and Gabriel sent you a text message, it, it was a volume. <laughs> but short version. Um, in high school, probably a high school a sports injury, Gabe uh, got hurt, and doctor gave him a, a script for Vicodin, and and he kind of liked that. And then, like, apparently, somewhere along the line, someone said to him, "Well, if you like Vicodin, try this Oxy," and he really liked that. And it went on and on and on. And then time time came by when when Oxy got to be very expensive, hard to come by on the street. It was just it was just tough to tough to get. So he naturally turned to smoking heroin. Uh, I, think if, I think if Gabe had stuck to smoking heroin, he probably would be alive today. But through, 
the level of people that would be heroin dealers, they convinced him that the, the high from a needle is much, much better than, than um, smoking, so he went to the needle. In and out, he, he, uh, he was in a, in a rehab one time for about two months. I think Gabriel spent some time being clean during his addiction. Uh, I, I believe that he did because I, I, I personally know where I won about a 90-day period in his life. I personally was, was uh, making him do a, do a UA test for me. I watched him deliver the, the urine, and he tested clean for 90 days. Mm. Either, if he wasn't clean, then he was very smart on how, how, to, how to mask that. But... Uh, as, as time went on, anyway, Gabe, Gabe, uh, Gabe injected heroin that took him down on May 26 of uh, 2011, and, and then he, he died. You have that picture? There he is. There he is. That's Thursday afternoon, May 26, 2011. And then the next picture? This family and friends waiting in the waiting room to yeah. find out the outcome. Yeah. And then the next picture is his mother hearing his last heartbeat. My wife was going to be here tonight, and uh, part, of, part with her with her input on here, uh, but some some things have happened, and, and, and my wife's her emotions are just. Uh, Right on the edge, and I'm I'm glad she's not here. But if, she, if if that's the first time I'd seen that picture with with Jackie's head laying on Gabriel's chest, I th I think we would have taken Jackie out of here on a gurney if she if she had seen that today. But I will tell you, um, the day that Gabe went down was on a Thursday, and about uh, about 11:30 in the morning when when he went down. But he had spent the previous 24 hours ministering to and witnessing to a good buddy of his who was having a romance breakup. Girlfriend was going to move to Chicago. But Gabriel had spent just almost 24 hours prophesying over him, um, praying for him. And then on Thursday morning, I happened to be at, up at church, and I got a call at about uh, 1130 from Gabe. And he had me on speakerphone. He was in his bathroom probably cooking the heroin that killed him. And he said, Dad, can you get me TJ's phone number? I haven't seen him at church for a long time. I want to make sure he's okay. Even in his wanting, having to whatever, uh, being addicted to heroin, he always was 300% was want, wanting to serve the Lord. He was never selfish. I was taking, uh, talking to Taryn one time in a in, in, uh, youth conference in 2010, our old building on Andreessen. Gabe saw Pastor Taryn doing something. He went to her and he said, Pastor, what are you doing? And she said, I got it, da, da, da. He said to her, let me take that off your plate. I can do that. You have more important things to do. That's who he was. I appreciate that, Bruce. That's who he was. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. And... And one, one last thing before I get down, I was I was going to make Pastor sit in that stool had he not sat there because I wanted to be on the Father's right hand side. <laughs> the reason that uh, uh, Pastor, can I say one more thing? I, I did the math. I did the math before I came up here. What's that? I did, the, I did some math before I came up on the stage. Gabriel would have had an 84% chance of surviving if he'd have been playing Russian roulette instead of putting a needle in his arm. There's always enough poison in the needle in your arm to be 100% deadly. 85% chance of surviving playing Russian roulette. So the next time you think, just one more time, there's enough poison in there to, uh, for it to kill you. The reason I wanted Bruce to share is because there's broken people here tonight. Um, we've lost three men, three people in this last three weeks um, from heroin overdose. And um, 
the reason we're here is to drive that out of our community. And we need you um, to stay clean and sober and to do the deal. And the only way we can do that is through the power of God. And I'm convinced um, beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that that's the only way and that's the way you guys see it. And, and the title of this sermon tonight is, is What Happens when, when Jesus is in the House? And um, because he's here tonight, he's in this place because his spirit resides here. His spirit resides in you and you bring him with you. And, and we have interaction and we have chemistry together as, as we have the body of Christ come together. And so there's power here. And, and I, I was thinking this week about roofs for some reason. Um, and uh, so I went to a story about a roof in the Bible um, in Mark, the chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. And I, I want to just go through this story because here's an illustration of when Jesus was in the house, when he showed up, when he was there, and, and what happened out of that. And, and it reminds me so much of what's happening here. Um, every week, it just, it, it, it's different. Isn't it different every week? Um, there's something new. There's something exciting because, because God is here. And, and in Mark, it says, and again, he entered Capernaum after some days. And Capernaum was sort of the headquarters, if you might say, of, of where everything happened and where Jesus was. And, and um, it was heard he, he was in the house. He was there. And, and immediately, many gathered together, so there was no longer room to receive them. Look around. Many gathered together and there was no longer room to receive them. There will be a day that there will be a 3,000 seat auditorium out here that will be full on Saturday nights of people in recovery. And I believe that with everything that's in me. Because, you see, we've got some momentum and we've got some things. And, and right now, there's, there's this, this excitement in the air. And, and if you can picture back then, it was the same as it is today. There was, there's hardly no room to, to fit in. And, and people were just clamoring. We've got to go see what's going on. I, I saw so-and-so last week, and, and they used to be addicted to heroin, and they're set free. In fact, the dude's even going back into the Clark County Jail talking to people. And they're wondering what happened. And, and so the, it, it was just like like this there it was it was just all of the clamor all of the things going on out there and people were talking and and they were talking about good things and immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door the doors were i mean the fire marshals would have had a heyday right there right and so then it says and he he preached the word to them sort of like what we're doing tonight and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. Can you just imagine and picture that? How many of you invited somebody to church tonight? Look at this. Look at this. Incredible. Think about it. The person you invited to church tonight. Back then, they invited someone to church, and they get to the church, and what would happen if you'd invited somebody to church tonight, and you knew that they needed what you had? You, you've got recovery. You've got the handle on this. You, you have it made because God has done something inside of you and changed who you are from the inside out. And you came up to the church building and you could not get in the door. And there's people standing out there saying, sorry guys, we're full. I mean, you can't come in. It's going to happen one of these days. It will happen. And it happened then. And so here they are standing and says, and, and I'm just picturing a couple of dudes like, like Donnie and John Boyce. Um, going, okay, wait a minute. We brought our friend to get healed. And you telling us we're not going in the building? In. Think again. We're coming in. <laughs> right? Right? Bill, you, you got this down. You know what happened. They went and found a ladder. Then they climb up on the roof. Can you imagine those yahoos? I mean, it's exciting. It reminds me of recovery. It reminds me of people that you'll go to any lengths to get what you want to get. And it's recovery, right? And so there they are. They get the old ladder out and they climb up on the roof and they start looking around. And they're going, okay, we got, man, this is a nice roof, but there's got to be a soft spot here somewhere, right? And uh, it, it was just so fitting for what I was doing last week, right? You know, there was some soft spots. We fixed them before we put the metal on. Anyway, so here we are, right? And they're walking around up there and going, okay, we're going to get in there. And can you imagine as those dudes brought their crowbars out and start prying up the roof? Right? And the elders of the church are going, 
Well, there's a windstorm or something. Man, there's something's falling from the roof. Hey, John, go over there. Get that guy. What's going on there? That's going to fall on old lady so-and-so, and she's going to just be ticked, right? That's her seat, right? She's been sitting there for years. She's going to be ticked. The stuff's falling on her right now, her hair, right? She's got her hair all done up, and it's going to be a mess, right? And Sorry, I get carried away with these stories, but think about it. What I mean, they're tearing apart the roof. When you tear apart a roof, something falls from the ceiling. It's not like, it, I mean, we just read this and it, it's like we just read it and go, yeah, they tore the roof off. Yeah, it's a big deal. They tore the roof off. I can just picture them. They probably had a sawzall. Right? Now this dude's laying on a stretcher. It's going to be a big hole. Right? It's not like. Oh, we'll just take some shingles off and lift this up and put our, squeeze our guy down through there. He's laying on a stretcher. They need some room, right? So it takes some time to tear this hole in the roof. I'm loving it. And I doubt if they had 20-volt sawzalls back then, right? I don't know what they had, but they tore the hole in the roof and they lowered him down because of the crowd. They uncovered the roof where he was. So when the, they had broken through... They let down the bed on which the paralytic was laying. Picture it. Going to any length to bring their friend into the presence of God because they knew that he needed to get what they had had. And here it is. And so in your, so, and what happened there is they let the bed down and when Jesus saw their faith, they're going, man, these dudes want it in here. This is cool. Dude, you got this, right? And some of you came here tonight realizing that you got this because you came in faith believing that God was going to show up. Some of you got in on the prelude on just worship. You came down here and fell before God and said, man, I want all that he has. And you're just like the, the friends that brought the paralytic. And so what did he say? He said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Some of the people were just going, oh, man, what is going on to our prim and proper church service? It is just a mess. I've been in churches like that. The frozen chosen. Yeah. I'm telling you what, man. People needed to bring them paddles out and electrify them back to life. I mean, just dead, right? You've been there, right? I grew up in a church like that. Sorry. They're all, they say to the cloud of witnesses, they're all in heaven right now. I know they are. Going, we never liked that belly kid anyway, right? And so they saw their faith. He said to the paralytic, son, you are healed. Your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes there reasoning, why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But (laughs) immediately when Jesus perceived these guys going south, (laughs) his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Why are you trying to figure everything out like you always do? How many of you have tried to figure it out on your own? And how did that work out for you? It didn't. It didn't. So why do you reason? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to paralytic, he said, better yet, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed that you came in here on, and go to your house immediately. He arose, took up the bed, went out in the presence of all of them, and that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. (laughs) Oh, man, we have never seen. And some of you walked in here tonight, and you have never seen anything like this before because you're sitting next to somebody, you're seeing somebody across the place that you've done time with, that their their life was wrecked, they were unmanageable, They, they had it all going wrong, and they're here, and they're free, and they picked up their bed and they walked out and said God has forgiven me and he set me free in the power of what he did through his spirit in me 
I'm here to tell you that it's no different back then than it is today. And, and we're on the verge of something miraculous. And it, it's, it's incredible what happened there. I don't even know if I'm going to have time to preach all this. When Jesus is in the house, there's anticipation of what's going to happen next. I don't know about you, but every time I drive into this parking lot, I'm anticipating what God is going to do next. Because he's doing exceedingly, abundantly more than we can even think. He wants to blow every brain cell left in your mind. He does. He, he wants to just, he wants to take over. And, and so at that point, it, it says that the ones who, it, it's crazy. There, there's, there's anticipation, isn't there? What did, let me ask you this. What did you come here tonight anticipating? Was it the, the music? Was it, what did you anticipate when you walked in? I mean, if we can come, can you do me a favor and come back every week and bring somebody with you anticipating that we're going to l- l- take the stuff off the roof and, and let them down here and we're going to watch with our own eyes that they get healed and set free from drug addiction? Can you say amen? I mean, I, I mean I'm excited. And, and what happened then is there was a proclamation. He began to preach the word to them. So if you have anticipation, I'll I'll promise you this. If you have anticipation that God is going to show up and you bring somebody or you come yourself anticipating, we will proclaim the word of God and it will go deposited into you and it will raise you up to a level you've never been at before. I will guarantee you. And then there was unification. How many of you see somebody in this room that you have never got along with in your life? You think it was any different back then? As they're, la- as they're lowering this dude down through the roof, there's guys looking at, oh, wow, those, there's those hayseeds from Hawkinson. Are you serious? Look at what they're, they're lo- they've ripped our roof. I mean, what happened? There was unification. Because the Spirit put everything back to where it needed to be. And, and there was unification. And immediately many, it said right in the Scripture, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. Everybody gathered together in one accord and said, we need to get this out. And then what happened? There was restoration. The Bible said that so when they had broken through and they let the, down the bed on which the paralytic was lying, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. You are restored tonight. Yes. You have restored. There's no doubt. There's no, no room to debate. You are restored. If you come to God saying, God, I need restoration, he will give it to you. Yes. So what do you need restored of? Some of you have been carrying around some crap stuff for a long time. Some of you guys have. And it's time to get rid of it. It's time to be restored. It's time to to get rid of the baggage, to, to let it go. And some of you tonight need that more than anything else because in order for you to be successful, in order for you to go on and do this thing, you need to get rid of that. You need to be restored. And anytime people are getting healed and revival breaks out, um, there's also uh, not only anticipation, proclamation, unification, restoration, but how many of you know there's confrontation? Yeah. We're coming right up against it right now. Confrontation in every turn. Bring it on! <laughs> right? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to stand up with the power that God has given you and confront it right head on? And, and, and you think about the, the fact that, I mean, if, if nobody's talking, I mean, we must not be doing something, right? I mean, if you never bump into the devil on your journey, maybe you're going in the same direction, right? Was that harsh? It was, but you can take it. I've seen some of the meetings you guys go to, all right? I'm going to meet you in a parking lot, right? Are you in this for real? Then we need to confront the enemy. The enemy never attacks a retreating army. He only attacks an advancing army. And that's why we're being attacked, because we're advancing. We're going forward, and we're taking some names, and we're, we're doing some stuff. And, and we need to rejoice in confrontation. We don't need to shrink back and say, oh, man, this sucks. No, get in his face. Let's go. Come on. 
We've trained. Come on, let's go. We got to do this. And the Bible says when the enemy comes in like the flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it and say, wait, stop. Are you serious right now? That's right. God is in control. And, and then, you know, after the confrontation comes the manifestation. Once you, comfort, once you confront it, then comes the manifestation and they're healing all over the place. And you push through. You didn't take a hit this week. Praise God. You push through and you confronted it. And you confronted it straight on. You said, no, I'm not going there. And all of a sudden, a manifestation comes out of nowhere and God just lights you on fire and just tunes you up. And, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, oh, I hate that. I do that sometimes. I reason thus within myself. I just got to rely on God. Amen. Which is easier to say, get up and walk? And then it says, he did that. And then through that, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go to your house immediately. And he rose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all. And so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, never saw anything like this. So we have, we have anticipation, proclamation, unification, confrontation, manifestation. And then what do we have? Glorification. Amen. God, you did this. You did this. There's going to be some praise and worship and some shouts about what God has done in your life. There's got to be. How can you keep it in? How, how, can, how can you hold back from, from what God has done? I mean, and I, I think about it. And, and tonight, as, as we close this service, um, this service tonight is, I believe it's going to be groundbreaking. And there, I, I just saw this in the spirit tonight that there's, there's, it's time for a separation from the old life. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm so tired of getting those phone calls. And there's some of you here tonight that, that you still have it in the back of your mind, well, I could just do, I'm feeling good. I, I, I deserve to go out and celebrate a little bit and just one little hit to set me free. Would, would, uh, some, of you, some of you feel that way tonight. I, I just know that in the spirit. Joel's family is here tonight. Could you come forward just a minute? I'm going to have Vicki just pray for you right now. I just feel led that Joel was a man in our house and it's a good man. Just kneel down here. And baby, can you come? And Larry and Larry and Janet, could you just, just, just spend some time and pray with them? Thank you. 
We come against him right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Of bringing drugs and alcohol into the lives of people. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to draw a line in the sand tonight. I want everyone who struggles with heroin addiction I want you to come forward right now and we're going to pray for you and we're going to pray a hedge of protection. God has you tonight. We think we got an, a, bill, a bull eye breakout in this country. We have a heroin issue in this country. I want you to spread all the way along the front of this auditorium tonight. Taryn, are you here? Whoever would like to come up and lay hands on these that are here, we, we, need, we need everybody that can pray to come and pray. And um, this, is a, this is a battle. It ruins lives. It, we're on the front lines of this right now. I want you to just rest right now. I want you to, I want everybody here to just take a deep breath, exhale, and, and realize that, can you just picture the creator of the universe right now with his hands on you? His spirit, his, his presence resting on you right now. And he wants to give you a picture of a new life, a life that's no longer in mayhem and chaos and running after the dope bag but tonight you're going to be set free by the power of God and I want you to picture that in your mind because unless you really believe that you're never going to have that and yet, unless everybody that's standing behind you has believed and, and, and realized that they had to tap into the power that God had for them and they overcame by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb and tonight you're going to see, see freedom. Why don't you just take a moment and just, in your own way, just cry out to God and say, God, I mean, I think a lot of times I, I, I pray for so many people and I think uh, I can pray for people, but until you pray yourself and, and tap into that resource and, and maybe, you, maybe you're here tonight and you feel like, man, I can't, you know what I've done? I, I can't come to God. Yeah, you can come to God. You just come to God just like you would come to me. There's not a one of you here, but what you wouldn't come up to me and say, Pastor Bill, would you pray for me? Well, can you just come to God tonight and say, God, I need your help. Do that right now. Just, just cry out to him.
Father, right now we just pray in the name of Jesus that you would set people free from drug addiction right now. Father, I pray right now for the, the demonic presence of heroin addiction to be lifted off these people. I pray that they would walk out of here, that they would never, ever crave another hit of heroin in their life, that you would take away that obsession to use. You'd take away all of those desires, and Father, that you would set them free, just like um, tonight, just like that we preached in this sermon, that, that they let the paralytic down, and Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk out of here. Father, I pray tonight that these would pick up their bed and walk out and leave that heroin addiction here and realize that when they picked up their bed and walked that they had power. They had power that they, they walked in here with no power and they're walking out with power on their own volition, on their own will, and realizing that, that they have the power to walk this out. Put their legs back under them. Let them know that they have the strength and the power that you represent in their life. We just claim freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are set free. You are set free. There will be testimonies tonight of, of coming out of here that something happened to you tonight that's different than it's ever been before. You just take a seat for just a moment. We're a little bit over time, but There's a picture that I share every week. And maybe tonight you're here and you're, you're not really too familiar with church and you're just going, man, this is freaky. <laughs> well, it done, you used to be pretty freaky yourself, so <laughs> this is a good kind of freaky, right? I love you so much, Pete. You're so awesome. <laughs> I was freaky. I'm still a little freaky. But maybe you're here tonight and you say, man, I don't know about all this stuff. I don't know. I'm, I, I just got on a bus at Lifeline and thought I'd come check it out and get some free time, right? I know some of you feel that way tonight. Because some of you have told me that before and now you're regulars here, right? You're sort of hooked in another way. It's a good way. But maybe you're here and there's this picture that I share and it's, it's basically a picture of Jesus and he's standing at the door and that door represents your heart. And some of you, you've turned your back on religion, you've turned your back on Christianity because, you know, religion sucks anyway. It's about that relationship with God. And that, there's nothing better, right, Cindy Malone? Nothing better. I mean, she's on fire. Gonna have to dye her hair red. But the bottom line is, maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Bill, I want to learn more. I would be open to just opening the door of my heart and saying, God, I want, I want your spirit to reside here. I want your spirit to talk to me and show me things that maybe I've never felt before. And if you want one of these cards, I'll bring you a card. It's, it's just it's Jesus standing at the door and there's a little um, scriptures on the back that you can look up and I wish I had my glasses. I'd read that to you. But um, anybody here, you want to just take one of those cards before we leave? Baby, can you, can you get that side over there? Anybody else? Proud of you guys. Proud of you guys. Betcha, brother. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. You want one? Yeah. Good to see you,
Anybody else? Okay, I want to, um, everybody, I want to just, I want to just pray for you that everybody that took a card, could you just come forward and stand here for just a moment? We're going to, we're going to just pray for you. If you took a card, come on up front. Don't be shy. God's got you. Do you have a microphone? Hey, Bill Allison, can you come on up here? I appreciate Bill. Bill, Bill Allison. Um, we got. How many of you know we got some pastors coming up here? We got Larry Jones and Bill Allison, and probably some more of you guys that you don't even know yet. But you're going to be pastors. You're going to be men, men and women of of God that are going to go out and proclaim the gospel and set people free. And um, I just see great things in each one of you. What is God calling you to? Tonight, you guys have made, you're going to make a decision to follow God and the enemy is going to come against you and tell you that it's bogus. You just tell him he's a liar and he's a punk. I won't finish, I won't finish the rest of that. Right? I'm going to ask Pastor Bill to just um, lead us in a prayer of salvation. And um, what he has you say is going to mean everything in your life as you change. And maybe, maybe there's some here that you'd like to come up and stand behind these and help represent and just pray for them. And because they're making a big step tonight. They're making a big step. And, and maybe you were there one time and you felt like, man, everybody's looking at me. Well... Think about this right now. The angels in heaven are standing there looking over the banish going, Check it out! Look, what, look what's happening in Brush Prairie. Right? Go ahead and lead us. You know, in Scripture it talks about when just one person is saved, heaven rejoices. Yes. Like Phoebe just said, can you imagine the partay going on in heaven right now? Bigger than any party you've had. <laughs> just everybody else just raise a hand up, please. Dear Heavenly Father, tonight I open my heart to you. Tonight I give you my will and my life. Lord Jesus, thank you for sending your son to die for me. Tonight, Lord, I am yours and you are mine. Tonight, Lord, I make that decision to follow you for the rest of my days. I know I may stumble. Thank you for being there. Your grace is enough. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say welcome home. Yeah.